the most important position group for Texas A&M when they face LSU is going to be the offensive line. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on into Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On the show today, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking a little bit about some surprise jerseys. We're talking about the injury report. We're also going to talk about why the receivers need to get open. Then we're going to get into the Wigman versus Nesmeyer quarterback battle and how that's going to play a massive role in this game. But we're going to start the show talking a little bit about some position groups that are going to be crucial when Texas A&M faces LSU. And the first group to me, without question, is this offensive line. When you look at this matchup, LSU, a lot of LSU fans were commenting on how much better the defense has been over the last few weeks. True, agree with that. But I still believe you can score on this defense. And frankly, when looking at how Texas A&M is going to play offensively in this game, the most crucial position groups got is the offensive line because of what it creates in the passing game and what it creates in the running game. You're going to need holes for Le'Veon Moss and Amari Daniels to run through. And then you're going to need to be able to give Connor Wigman time to get the ball to receivers and the receivers need time to get open downfield. Tech uh, LSU currently is seventh in college football in sacks with 24. They get pressure on the quarterback, and you're going to have to find a way to slow this pass rush when Connor Wigman is dropping back to pass. One of my favorite things about competition and about football, so I think it was, was it yeah, PFF posted about basically how good Trey zoon has been this season. 213 uh, pass block snaps, zero sacks allowed, zero quarterback hits, only seven pressures. And LSU sack leader Braden Swinson put a – it was. It's like Hank Hill kind of making like a little smirk face. You know, I I don't, I don't know what he's insinuating there. I, maybe it's hey, it's going to be a long day, buddy. Tie the laces tight. Whatever. Point is, that's funny. I love that. That's great. That's what college football is about. Now, I'm a believer in just show it on the field. You know, uh, let let it let it go on the field because I just you, get, you give yourself an opportunity to look silly when you do stuff like that. But I also respect being confident in your game. I mean, Swinson, listen, he's a darn good football player, and, and, and he's going to be a problem for this Texas a and offensive line. Um, and that's what's great about football is being able – is sport in general, is being able to post stuff like that on social media and, and, and you know tell the team, hey, I'm coming, be ready. Um, but knowing that LSU is one of the top teams in college football when it comes to sacks, this Texas a and offensive line is going to have to play well. Ironically enough, Texas a and with 17 sacks is ranked, it was like 35th in college football. I was surprised they were as high up on that, they were tied for 35th with a bunch of teams, but I was surprised they were as high up on that list as they were um, with, with that you know a number of sacks. But this offensive line has to show up. It, it's very simple. If, if Texas A&M's offensive line does not have a good day, I think that, like, we could sit here, and we're going to get into secondary. I think the secondary plays a huge role, too. But, I mean, it, to me, it just feels like if your offensive line doesn't show up. Like, with the secondary, if the secondary doesn't play well, well, maybe your defensive line will bail you out a little bit and get a ton of pressure on Nussmeyer and, and, and make it tougher on him to get the ball downfield. Like, the, you can get some help there. With the offensive line, if your offensive line isn't creating holes for – the running game, you know, and, and Moss and Daniels are getting hit one yard into the backfield on every carry. Yeah, they can they can maybe make some guys miss or break some tackles and, and create some big plays. But still, at the end of the day, it, it's a lot harder to do your job as a running back when you are not getting blocking downfield. Um, that's why, you know, and then same thing with Connor Rigman. I mean, if he has two seconds to make a decision, receivers aren't going to have time to run their routes. You're not going to have open players. The offensive line, and it's one of our offseason topics. I mean, offensive line, I was a former offensive lineman. You know, I I um 
I understand how the importance of the position. I mean, if you don't create opportunities for your skill position players, you're not doing your job. And you have to give these players chances to do their job. And that's why the offensive line is so important. And knowing how skilled this front is for LSU, it's not going to be easy for this offensive line to have a great day. But it's never easy. This is the SEC. You're going. It, it, it's the NFL junior. I mean, you're going against elite players every day. You have to find a way to help your team out. L the offensive line did not play their best game against Mississippi State. I, I thought there were some plays they let down the run game and some plays they let down Wigman, but I think they're going to bounce back in this game. I think that Texas A&M, knowing the importance of this game, is going to show up when it matters the most. Um so that is why the offensive line is so crucial. And then, yes, the next position group I have listed is the secondary. Knowing how good of a player Nussmeyer is, and LSU fans that are here, we welcomed y'all in yesterday. Um, there was a lot of you in the comments. I'm a huge Nussmeyer guy. He is a really good player. I believe in his NFL upside. I respect that he stuck around and waited his turn. Great player. And I'm really excited to see what the future looks like for him. I'd see him to play bad on Saturday. But – um, you know, the secondary is going to have to hold up. They're going to have to hold up against Nesmeyer and LSU's elite receivers. LSU has great receivers. The tandem between a couple of great, a few great receivers and a quarterback like Nesmeyer can be deadly. If this secondary is giving up chunk plays all game long, it's going to be concerning. Coach Elko talked about how he was a little bit concerned about the downfield passing attack of Mississippi State hurting this team. Um, there are some, you know, plays here and there, but coach Elko after the game said he was pretty happy with how the uh, secondary held up against that pass attack. And obviously this one's a lot, a lot better. So you've got to find a way to slow Nussmeyer and slow these receivers as a group in the secondary, because once again, I talked about it yesterday. You don't want to get in a shootout with this team. You don't want to get in a shootout with LSU. I don't think you win that game, especially knowing their defense is playing better of late. I still believe it's vulnerable. I still believe you can score on their defense, but they're playing better of late. That is why you do not want to mess around at all with a shootout. So the secondary has got to play well. The next group I have is the running backs. You know, and I, I highlighted Le'Veon Moss, but I mean, here's the deal. The, as much of a Le'Veon Moss guy as I am, and I think, and I, and I want to pull up the numbers on um, Amari Daniels when it comes to yards per carry, because I mean, Amari Daniels has had a good season. I, I just haven't been totally. There, there's been some nitpicking I, I have on it. I mean, four point two yards per carry. It, I, I don't think you can gripe about that now, knowing that Moss is going for six point four yards per carry on more carries. You feel a lot better about that. But at the end of the day. Mari Daniels is going to get his carries. That's been proven. They are not going to give Le'Veon Moss 27 carries. They're going to split these out, you know, 18, 10, 28. Like, he's going to get a chunk of carries. So both of these running backs have to play well. I mean, you, you can't you can't just take snaps off when Le'Veon Moss needs a breather. You can't. Amari Daniels has to have a good game on the ground. Um, and we know he's capable of doing that. That's my only issue with Amari Daniels has been at times the efficiency. He's created some big plays, he's had some truck runs. It's just been – then there's been some games where he, you know, has four carries in a row where he goes four for three yards. And, you know, those are drive killers because then you're setting up the second and nine, third and ten, and it's, you know, just not easy to convert those in the SEC. You'd never want third and longs. You want third and four or five or less. So – both of these running backs need to play well in this game, and, and I think that they will. I think that they're going to be able to um, get some space on the ground. LSU's given up some grounds on the yard, some yards, grounds on the yard, some yards on the ground uh, so far this season, and they've given up yards through the air. That they've they've been beatable both places, but yes, they have been better of late. But at the end of the day, I mean, I, I don't I don't care if they've been better of late. I really don't. I, I don't care because at the end of the day, you have to find a way to win. You have to find a way to win this game. We discussed the importance of this game on yesterday's show. I saw a great tweet from Jake Crane, uh, someone in this industry I really respect, and he was talking about how this game, the importance of this game for both teams is really up there because it gives you that insurance of if you win that one, you really a, a lot of stress is taken off your shoulders the rest of the year. If you don't, you really got to win out to 
secure yourself a chance at making the playoff. And that's the importance of this game. So every, I mean, here's the deal. We highlighted the, we highlighted the secondary, we highlighted the offensive line and the running backs, but at the end of the day, nobody can play, can play bad in this game. You need every position group to show up when, when, you are playing an important game. Everyone's got to play well. It's got to be an entire team effort, and that's how you win, especially against a great team like LSU. So the whole roster needs to show up, but those position groups in you know specifically need to play well in this game if you want to get the huge dub. We're going to talk about Wigman versus Nussmeyer, and does Wigman have to outplay Nussmeyer to win this game? We'll have that conversation coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, we'll talk about our friends over at FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by playing so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. As y'all ever dares here at Locked on Aggies know, I am a huge fan of uh, Thursday Night Football. Me and all my buddies go. We, we, we get a bite to eat, um, have a few cold ones and, and and bet on the games and we bet on first touchdown scores and it's just a ton of fun and we do that on FanDuel. It just makes the game more fun. Go check them out. Promise you won't regret it. That's FanDuel.com to get started. Now we are going to have the Connor Wigman versus Nussmeyer debate. And we've discussed this a little bit throughout parts of the season. You know, uh, both of these quarterbacks, I think, are really good when it comes to who's had the better season without any kind of debate or question. It's Nussmeyer. He has been really good. And I mean, you go back to four or five months ago, I, I've been in on Nussmeyer for a long time. I think he's a great player. I think he's got a lot of upside. I think he's got the NFL upside. But when it comes to this football game, I, I just I think that I think first of all, I think that Nussmeyer could outplay Wigman a little bit and still win this game. I mean, just knowing a LSU is going to throw the football a lot more than Texas A and M. Reason that's important is like I, I'm saying if you look at the stat sheet and Nussmeyer has 110 more passing yards than Wigman and an extra passing touchdown, whatever, but AM wins the game. I think partially because if you're Connor Wigman, you got to know your role for this team. You got to know what this team's asking you to do. They're not asking you to go out there and throw it 53 times. That's not what's going to happen. I'd say he's going to throw it around in that 25 to 30 range. That'd be my guess. I think against LSU, they might have to throw it a little bit more than they have in some other games, but I think Connor Wigman's going to show up. You know, he, um, did not have his best game against Mississippi State. People are concerned. People are worried about is he gonna is he gonna be okay? What's the deal? I think he's gonna have a he's gonna bounce back in a big way. What I love and respect about Connor Wigman's game is first of all, he tells it how it is. After the uh, Notre Dame game, he came out and said, Listen, I didn't play well. And I what I love about is what I love about Conor Wigman is he loves football. It's like the Jim Harbaugh thing. Have y'all seen that? Where he goes, I love guys who love football. Conor Wigman loves football. He's that type of guy that when he's not on the field, whether it was last year, whether it was the games he missed this year with the injury to his shoulder, he wants to be out there playing football. And I respect that so much. Watching him, you know, watching him work hard to get back on the field it's just been really impressive to me in how much he loves football and just guys like that, guys like that show up when it matters the most. Here's the deal. It mattered the most against Notre Dame and he didn't show up. But as we talked about yesterday, this football game is an opportunity for Texas A&M not to secure a playoff spot. I think a lot of people misunderstood what I was saying yesterday. I was saying that if you beat LSU, you are putting yourself in a position that if you just don't shoot yourself in the foot against a, a bad Auburn team and a meh South Carolina team, you are going to make the college football playoff. That's just that's what's going to happen. That's why this game is so important to both of these teams. Both of these teams are in a similar situation, um, having lost a non-conference game in the beginning of the year. Um, but 
I just think the lights are going to be bright, and this time Connor Wiggins is going to show up. It, it he did against Missouri, but it felt like it. It just from the that game never was in question. And in games like that, it's really easy to play quarterback. Well, it's never easy to play quarterback, but it's a lot easier to play quarterback when just every everything is working. You know it, what? What is going to make or break this game is how Connor Rigman plays when maybe there's an all systems failure on a drive, or um, you're down a touchdown in the in the fourth quarter. How is he going to show up in an opportunity like this? And you know who'll be paying attention to that is NFL scouts. The NFL scouts that still believe in the upside of Connor Rigman. I mean, we talked about it. There was late first round mock drafts that had Connor Rigman's name on them, and I don't think he's lived up to that to this point in the season. But I believe this is an opportunity for him to do that. Connor Wigman is a really good quarterback. He did not play well against Mississippi State. He did not play well against Notre Dame. He played insane against Missouri. He needs to play well in this football game. Let's call a spade a spade, ladies and gentlemen. If he does not play well, you're going to lose this game. Now, I my argument has kind of been, I think if Nussmeyer plays really good to really good and Connor Wigman plays good, I still think Texas A&M can win. I think you got the fan support. It's going to be loud. It's a home game. It's going to be hectic. I think that helps. Um, that's going to help a lot in this in this football game. But I think that if Connor Rigman plays bad and Nussmeyer plays good, great, awesome, whatever, then the Aggies are going to lose this game. Connor Wigman needs to show up in this football game. I mean, I mean, there's no more. I feel like I'm giving a, a hype speech now. But I mean, you know. Former five star, a dude that's supposed to be an elite quarterback, a first round NFL talent, and injuries have hurt his career. So a poor play in big games have hurt his career. This is an opportunity to show the world who Connor Wigman is. This is an opportunity to show the world that he is a first round NFL draft pick, that he should have been a five star in his recruiting class. And, you know, you learn a lot about a player. In how they play when the when the lights are the brightest. Some players don't show up. Some players are fueled by that. Connor Wigman gives me the vibes that he is a player that's fueled by that. I just I am hoping what happened against Notre Dame was a fluke. I'm hoping he just didn't play well. And that happens. Anybody that's played sport, you know how many bad games I had on the mound in my baseball and college baseball career? I mean, too many to count. But that is part of sports. You play bad sometimes. At the end of the day, you just don't show up some games. That happens. And it matters how you bounce back. And I think Connor Rigman's going to bounce back in a significant way in this game. I've just got a suspicion that he's going to have a seriously special performance. And you need him to. You need him to. He needs to play well in this game. Because, you know, at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you need quarterback play to win win a big game, and, Con and Connor Rigman needs to do that. So who do I think is going to win this quarterback battle? I, I think that volume might lead the the average eye to say when this game ends that Nussmeyer, maybe they'll, whether they lose or, or win, outduels Wigman. But I think when it comes to role for what Texas A&M is trying to do, I think he's got a chance to outplay – Nussmeyer in that regard, and it's not going to be more passing yards. It's not going to be more passing touchdowns unless you know he throws two or three around the you know deep ones or around the end zone, whatever. But I think that you know court. I mean, it's all, the whole our wins a quarterback stat debate, which is a great debate to have. But, but um, you know, I think that that is going to be how we figure this out. I think it's which quarterback wins the football game. They play different roles. They're in different you know kind of styles of offense. They do different things. It's which team can lead their team to victory um, or which which quarterback. And, and I think that, I, I, like I said, this this game to me, I felt extremely confident Texas a was going to beat Missouri. I did not expect them to steamroll Missouri. I, I like Texas a to win this football game, but it, I am as close to 50-50 as you can possibly be when it comes to who I think is going to win this one. It's going to be a fun game. Connor Wigman, your most important player, needs to show up in your most important game. Connor Wigman's got to play well. And if he does, Texas A&M will win this football game. We've got some potentially exciting jerseys. We've got an update to the injury report. We're going to talk about those things and why we do have a problem when it comes to the injury report coming up right here on Locked on Aggies.
But I want to tell you about our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action with over 10 million members and billions of dollars in award awarded winnings. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Run your game all season long on Prize Picks. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Sign up today and get $50 instantly when you pay f- play $5. You don't even need to win to receive that $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Think Justin Jefferson will get more than 83.5 yards next week. Christian McCaffrey won for more than 75.5 yards. Cook up hot takes with your friends. Win real money this football season when you and your crew r- run your game on prize picks. Download the app today and use code Lockdown College. Get fifty dollars instantly after you play your first five dollar lineup. That's Locked On College promo code to get fifty dollars when you play your first five dollar lineup. Price Picks is the best place to go play your daily online fantasy. Go check them out. I love it. It is a ton of fun. Go over and get that fifty dollars when you play your first five. So it sounds like there's a chance at some special uniforms, and that's going to be kind of cool. We're not going to talk about this for multiple minutes. I just, I always love, I think that's something that gets the fans fired up, and that's something that get the, gets the players fired up. I mean, new uniforms are cool. Once again, anybody that's played a sport, I remember when I first saw my senior year of high school, our, uh, we got these really cool white jerseys. I wish I still, I lost that hat that went with that jersey. I wish I still had it. Um, but those jerseys, I remember when me and my teammates first saw those, we were like, oh my goodness, these are insane. Those jerseys were awesome. And it was just a special feeling. It it felt like not that we were more motivated to win when we were wearing those jerseys, but I mean, you're just kind of fired up. You you know what I mean? You you look good. You feel good. You play good. It's a real thing. And, um, I think we could see some kind of cool jerseys when it comes to the blackout theme in this game. So that's going to be excited. I'm excited to see what this team looks like, um, when it comes to the new jerseys. Injury report. You are going to be without Chase Basantis in this football game, which that's a problem. I mean, there's no sugarcoating that. That is a problem. Um, but when you pull up the injury report, I mean, you look at you've got, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six Texas AM players listed on the injury report. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 players on LSU's injury report. What does that mean? I would say to this point in the season, Texas A&M has been fairly lucky when it comes to players staying healthy. I mean, obviously losing Mark Nabu for the year, um, Ruben Owens and Tariq Chappelle for the year all hurt. Uh, but I mean, at the end of the day, those are valuable players on your roster. But for the most part, this team has stayed really healthy throughout the year. And that's huge. I mean, if you lose your whole roster throughout the season, it's really hard to win football games. That's just the reality. I mean, it's not easy to win football games when your whole team's banged up, when your players aren't in the lineup. It's just not easy to win football games that way. So knowing that this team is relatively healthy compared to some other teams, you've got to be, you feel good about where you're at. But not having Basantis is going to be interesting. I mean, someone's going to have to step up and play well in a significantly important game. And that's always a little scary when you're running out an offensive lineman that obviously I've been happy with the usage of offensive line because you've gotten a lot of guys, some snaps, which is really a solid thing. I mean, that helps you in a position like this. So I think the Aggies are going to be okay with a, you know, a non one of your plan guys out there, but it's definitely something that LSU is going to be paying attention to. They're going to be definitely saying out loud, Hey, okay, look, this offensive line, they're playing a, a player who hasn't played as much snaps as a guy like Basantis, and that's going to be a place we can maybe, uh, um, you know, take advantage there. Um, and then Jalen Henderson is still doubtful. I, I mean, once again, I'm not. We're, we're talking about your third string quarterback here. I'm not incredibly concerned about that. Y- you know, you'd have to lose two quarterbacks in a game for this to be a problem, um, which I mean is, has happened and, and can happen. But for the most part, I mean, it's not the you know, it's not something I'm sitting here going, oh man. We're going to be without Jalen Henderson. We're we're in trouble. Um, now, Jalen Henderson, I still think, is one of the best third-string quarterbacks in all college football. But that really is the bulk of the injury report. I, I, I'm not overly concerned. I mean, Basantis is a problem. It's a real problem. But 
for the most part, it's not like you have eight players that are valuable to the team, questionable right now. And you're going, oh, man, if this guy and this guy and this guy aren't out there, we are in trouble. So you feel pretty fired up about that. That's going to do it for Thursday's episode of Locked on Aggies. Thank you all so much for being here every single day. Leave some mailbag questions in the YouTube comments, and we will discuss those on the show tomorrow. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. It helps the show a ton. Leave five stars on all podcast platforms. That also helps the show out a lot. Subscribe there as well. All those things help me out and help the show out, so I'd really appreciate it if you all could do that for me. I hope everyone has an absolutely awesome rest of their Thursday. Should be a pretty good Thursday night football game tonight. Who's playing? The, I know it's the Vikings, but I forget who they play. Let's see. They play the Rams. It should be a fun football game tonight. Hope everyone enjoys it. Hope everyone has a great rest of the day, and I will see you all tomorrow right here on Locked on Aggies.